I have a pretty basic general question just for us to set the stage, especially anybody in the audience that might not be familiar. But how would you all describe the core mission of threat hunting and what impact could it have? As far as threat hunting is concerned, I kind of look at it as a search for the unknown. Most of the detection capabilities are based around known things, known malware families, known actor behaviors. Threat hunting is really trying to look for the unknown, the novel things, the things that may slip through the cracks and evade what your traditional detection would be, or potentially looking to identify new activity from a specific group that you're hunting down. What are the main things a bad actor will try and do with trying to breach a network? And how can defenders apply that information to their threat hunting exercises? The number one maxim of attacking is uh, the, the team that knows the network the best owns the network. Mm. And so if you have not nailed your fundamentals, then you cannot threat hunt in any effective way, right? Because you don't understand the forest you're hunting through, yeah. right? So, you know, you really, you really need to nail that first. When we're advising customers, oh, let's throw it on. Well, when's the last time you did a compromise assessment? It's mm -hmm. like, if you've never taken that broad to understand, like, if I'm compromised, why would you do a deep dive on hunting? Or, you know what, I need a red team, but they don't have a threat and vulnerability management program. You know, mm -hmm. what are the adversaries going to leverage to get initial access? So, you're right, like, the basics win. And having, being able to have that conversation is it's really important to educate, you know, organizations and customers like how to normalize and where to start. One of the other things that I would look for is places in the company where uh, they require more speed than they are given the leeway for by their IT department so that they will be forced financially to seek workarounds to the systems that you put in place and people will be incentivized to look the other way for that to happen so the money flows. Mm. Um, and then I would look at under-resourced places in the company, right? So you find those two places, the places that are moving too fast and the places that are ignored and start to work from there. And all of you touched on this a little bit already, but if you can share um, what you think the main principles of threat hunting are. One of the things you can do when you're building out these hunts is it allows you to identify potential gaps in visibility. Like maybe you realize, oh man, it would be really easy to detect this activity, but we're not getting a log source that gives us this information. Maybe we should look at adding logging capabilities to this platform to make sure that we're getting these messages. Now we can build a threat hunt and we improve the overall security posture of the organization at the same time. Understanding what's your visibility, your you know, what you have visibility to, but then also what you don't have visibility to and taking what you're seeing maybe from a managed detection standpoint, but also mm -hmm. reactively learning from those incidents and then baking that into your hunt process. And there was a power company I was working at and we were doing threat hunting. We found a problem with a uh, SQL injection issue and we were able to remediate it and a couple of weeks later, we had a pen test team come in and do a, an external, and they tried the exact same exploits again. And we were sitting there watching it on the console, and we could see what they were doing. And we pick it up, and the phone them, and we're like, "No, no, you, you want to do this?" And like, "How do you how do you know that we're doing that?" <laughs> so they were absolutely flummoxed that that was happening. So that was, that was a fun one in that regard. But the the way we found it was from a previous pen test. The pen tester had left uh, some software on one of the servers that they hadn't told us about. And we had actually discovered it, and thankfully nobody had taken advantage of it. But you know, hope is not a strategy for security, mm -hmm. so we have to be constantly vigilant as defenders, looking for things like that, because that was something perfectly innocent that could have been absolutely devastating had a, uh, a third party found it. Have you guys heard like the uh, the Ness Rudin looking for his keys in the parking lot story? No, no, but say tell us. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so. Uh, Ness Rudin is walking from the mountain through a bunch of fields back to where he parked his car in the parking lot. He, get, he walks from the mountain down through the field back to the parking lot. By the time he gets to the parking lot, it's nighttime. So the lights are on in the parking lot. He doesn't have his keys. Mm. So Ness Rudin spends several hours looking around the parking lot under the lights for the keys. And someone comes along and says, what are you doing? And Ness Rudin says, I lost my keys. I'm looking for them. And the guy says, where do you think you lost them when you see your keys last? And he's like, well, Last time I saw him was when I was on that mountain over there, so probably somewhere along the way. And then the guy says, why are you looking in the parking lot? And he says, it's the only place where the lights are. 
<laughs> I like that. All right? It goes back to what I was saying earlier about reversing yeah. the hypothesis, like flipping the script, like thinking differently. That's like, you have to have that mindset. I, I do have a good example. Okay. Um, recently, I had some of my folks hunting in uh, malicious driver activity, like looking for malicious drivers, what we're seeing in the landscape, hunting down that activity. As part of that, started finding a couple of different malicious drivers that appeared to be related, started doing additional research, and ended up finding a set of tooling that was facilitating wide-scale abuse of old certificates from pre-2015 and resulted in us working with Microsoft and revoking a bunch of certificates in this huge investigation. And it all sprung out of just hunting for malicious drivers. So that, that kind of shows you where you can go when you're just looking in general directions. How do you prepare to fail in threat hunting, which it, I can at least surmise that you got to fail a lot to learn. Um, and then how do you recover from a failure? So for me, my team fails constantly. That's mm. our, our job is failure. Basically, yeah. Yeah. we fail all the time. We succeed very rarely. Okay. It, it's just, you got to get comfortable with that. Threat hunting is an exercise in failure. I mean, it, it, if you're, if you're lucky, you won't find anything because that means that there's nothing there to find. I mean, it, it, yeah, failure is going to happen. That's like the default state for threat hunting. I yeah. cannot agree more. That's what I say. Like fail first attempt. I learn. I mean, that's, that's where like you learn from those, mm. those mistakes and, you know, that's and taking what you learn from one hunt, baking that back into your methodology for a future hunt, that is where the magic happens at the end of the day because you're, you're learning and you're growing and that's what it's all about. I spent 20 years as a defender before I ever got into the vendor space and for various companies and uh, DOD contracts and things like that, I would do types of threat hunting before it was called that at that time. Um, and it was very interesting to see like how much we didn't have from a, from a tooling perspective that is available today as well. We didn't have a lot of the resources back then that are available now. The thing that I absolutely wish I had at the time was having you know a partner that I could reach out to, much like a Talos, and say, look, I'm having this trouble because we had very finite resources in our organizations. And that was one of the biggest trouble is that for all the research we needed to do, we only had a small margin of the number of people we really needed to actually execute on that. I think that's kind of, you know, we're customer like that light bulb moment for customers is when we bring something to them that we're seeing, whether it's proactively through a hunting exercise that we're doing or reactively through a, an incident, them understanding that risk, but then be able to like, how do we detect this next time? How do we prevent this next time? So I think that's really the value, the output of a threat hunt or an IR engagement is, again, taking what you're learning with it, how do you bake that back into your detection process and methodologies to, to help you get faster at detecting things because yeah, it's easy to detect knowns, but what about the, about the unknowns? <laughs>